it to shreds. What if it wants? If it wants, what's in the cupboard now? We present Catherine Hurlbert, Richard Pierce, and Susan Mann in a play by Robert Westall, Yaxley's Cat. Good morning. Oh, uh, hello. I see you're admiring our bench ends. Yes. Yes, they're medieval, aren't they? The, the guidebook says they're the best in Norfolk. Well, far be it from me to boast. <laughs> You're on holiday? Yes. And how are you enjoying our bracing Norfolk coast? Well, uh, to be honest, not as much as Suffolk. We, mm. We've stayed at Dunwich. Oh, where the sea's eating the cliffs. Yes. yes. Poor Dunwich. Seventeen medieval churches. All gone down in the sea now. Only a wooden cafe left. <laughs> Yes, the, the children kept finding things where the cliffs had crumbled. <laughs> Tim even thought he'd found a human vertebra. He kept staring at me from the back of the car. <laughs> uh, till an old man told me it was only a calf's vertebra from a midden. A continuous process of resurrection in Dunwich. <laughs> the secrets of all hearts being revealed. Uh, yes, I suppose so. I'm afraid we can't offer you that sort of thrill. The sea's building up the land round here. If we bury something, it stays buried. Uh, <laughs> Are you staying locally? At Warney. Warney? Hmm. Lots of my lady parishioners do a good bed and breakfast, but I, I never heard of anyone at Warney. Miss Yaxley? Oh, yes. Miss Yaxley. My only stalwart from Warney. Never misses. Oh, Christmas, Easter and Harvest Festival. <laughs> But I'd, I'd have a thin time if all my villages were like Walney. Oh, really? Why is that? Oh, mainly because they haven't got a church of their own, I suppose. Oh. Now, I sometimes think country people love their parish church more than they love God. It's, it's where their loved ones are buried, I suppose. Yes, uh, you said that that was what was mainly wrong with Walney. Is there something else? Well, it's a long story. And the man is dead. Best not to speak ill of the dead. This dead man, was he called Yaxley? As a matter of fact, he was. Why? We are living in his cottage. You what? <laughs> Nora Yaxley couldn't let that, surely. She must be out of her mind. Vicar, I need to talk to you. Urgently. Um, well, uh, let's take a stroll in the churchyard. Yes. We can sit on this table tomb. They get quite warm in the sun. Oh. The dead may have ears, but not as sharp as my brass cleaning ladies. <laughs> now, tell me what's worrying you. Oh, I scarcely know where to begin. At the beginning? What was the beginning? The fact that I was running away from my husband? Oh. oh nothing like that, I assure you. No other man involved. No, it's ju just that my husband's so efficient. He doesn't leave me room to breathe. If I tell you that our front garden at home has two driveways, one marked in and one marked out, so there's no room for any flowers at all... So you see what I mean? Uh, I begin to. <laughs> I've only got to say I fancy going to Salzburg, and he and his superhuman secretary have booked executive class plane tickets and five-star hotel reservations, and the best seats for a performance of the magic flute. Some women would like that. Yes. Well, I, I came up here with the children to get away from him. To just get lost. And even then, he booked us into all the best five-star hotels, do you see? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, well, so how did you get involved with Sep Yaxley's cottage? Well, it's been empty for seven years, ever since Sep... Um, well, it must be in a dreadful state. Uh, well, the kids and I have been drifting rather pointlessly around East Anglia. We arrived at Warney and, well, there was a thick mist. Frankly, I didn't like the place because I loved the sea and the sea was so far away. But the kids wanted a walk, what they call a nosy around. 
really can't argue with them or they make your life hell. <laughs> Don't I know it? <laughs> anyway, we, we set off down that path from the windmill that looks like it leads down to the sea. Oh. Look at this crab, Mum. Oh, wonder what sort it is. Oh, a very dead, very smelly crab. Oh, your hand's gonna stink even more than your feet. It's the crab of the living dead. So decayed, its legs are falling off. But it's come back to get you, Jane, and claw your face into a screaming skull. Get off! Oh. Ah, that's what I think of your rotten crab. Oh, oh look, I think it's time we were getting back. Look, don't we can find that path up to the mill. Oh, this sea fog's getting worse, and we've got to find somewhere for lunch. It's nearly one o'clock. It's not this one. There was a funny tree stump. Look, it looks like the right one to me. Let's try it. It must come out somewhere. Maybe that's the mill. That's not a mill. That's a house, dickhead. Oh, dear. It was the wrong car. Good old Jane. Oh, shut up. <sighs> well, perhaps if we knock, they'll tell us the way to the mill. Mum, hmm? this house is empty. Can't you read? Beach cottage to let off for sale, apply beach house. Oh, fancy letting a place like this. What a tip. Let's have a nosy inside. Okay. Yeah. Well, we can't do that. What if somebody comes, Tim? Come, come back this instant. Jane! Oh, damn. Jane! Tim! Wait! All these tangled weeds. Rosebush is growing wild. It's like Sleeping Beauty's castle. Sleeping Beauty's got big feet. Look at these wellies, size 12, I bet. A big, big man. I think we'd better go. There's another little house at the bottom of the garden. That one's mine. It's oh, not. Tim, oh, Jane. Oh, That's not Pom. It's the outdoor loo. Loo? You mean even in the middle of the night? Well, there's probably a new proper one inside the house. I doubt it. Bits of old newspaper hanging on a nail. Are they to read? Why you to wipe a... your bottom on. This loo was last used on the 4th of July, 1981. That's the date on this paper. Big <laughs> Oh, the MCC weren't doing very well. What's this other little room? Next door. Oh, it's probably the wash house. Yeah. There's a big sort of a tub. Yes, to put all the washing in. Oh, it's full up. All this black, smelly liquid. That's not washing, that's supper. Oh, <laughs> Probably hasn't been used for donkey's years. Oh, there's another piece of newspaper. Half burnt. July the 1st, 1981. Whatever happened here in July 1981? Come on, let's go. It's nearly half past one. Oh, no, Look, no. we haven't found our car yet. We'll miss lunch. Oh, this house is the best thing we found this holiday. Better than that rotten crazy golf at Cromer. Better than Indiana Jones. What a whim. Hey. Let's try the kitchen. Oh, no. Oh, why is it always two against one? Wait for me. Wait. Ah, the back door's not locked. <laughs> no taps on the sink, only this village pump thing. Oh, it doesn't work. Somebody never finished their breakfast. I think it used to be bacon and egg. It's all green furry bumps now. Mm. Hey, look at the calendar. Mm -hmm. July 1981 again. And every day crossed out till July the 6th. The mystery deepens. I'm going to investigate upstairs. Oh, yeah, Tim. Oh, there's a big chamber pot under the bed. Thou God seest me. What? On the wall. Oh. What's this big jug and bowl? Washing your face in the morning. No bathroom. <laughs> hey, Mum. Hmm? Can we stay here? Oh, yes. Let's rent it for a bit. Yes. We're only pissing about on this holiday. We're not going anywhere, really. Don't be silly. No hot water, no proper loo, nowhere within miles to park the car. It wouldn't be any harder than camping. Dad never let us go camping. No electricity. Oh, come on, Mum. No. <laughs> You're worse than Dad. You don't have to be Mrs. Dragsville. 
Not when Dad's not here. But how would we get the cases from the car? We never get the car up this park. I'll fetch the cases from the car by myself. And what about needing the loo in the middle of the night? We can use the potty. Go on. Come on, Mum. Oh, I suppose we could go and see. Oh, yes! Mum, you're great. There's nobody home. It can't be helpful. Oh, third time lucky, Mum. No? One more time. Oh. All right. Keep your hair on. I'm coming. Gosh. Yes? Uh, good afternoon. Uh, we've come about renting the house. Oh, uh, only for a week or, or a fortnight. Oh. Come in. Thank you. Lovely kitchen you have. It's just like my granny's. And your granny had all the hard work of it, I expect. Oh, sit down, sit down. But mind my bears. Oh, there's a teddy in every chair. <laughs> and mind your manners. Those bears are older than your father. Maybe than your grandfather. <clears throat> yes, uh, we're interested in the house up the path, Mrs... Um... Miss. Miss Yaxley. Oh. Were you thinking of buying or letting? Well, letting is £30 a week. Buying is 20000 with all the furniture thrown in. Well, that's very reasonable. <laughs> uh, what's the house called again? Beach Cartage. Oh. Well, this is Beach House and that's Beach Cartage. It belonged to my brother. I inherited it under his will. No, I've got no use for it. Takes me all my time to keep this place going, my time of life. Much too much for me. Much too much. We, we thought we'd like to try it for a week, just to see if the children like it, and, and then perhaps... Well, uh... It's no place for children. My brother was an old man. I think it's brilliant. Yeah. Very well. No, I don't suppose a week can do any harm. I'll only charge you twenty pound for the first week. You have to clean the place up. Men live in such a muddle. <laughs> they ain't no good. But I'd like the rent in advance. Oh yes. Weekly in advance. It's coming, Mum. It's coming. Ah, it's going to work. Here she comes. Oh, it's a rusty colours. No, look, it's running clearer and clearer. We've done it. Now, let me taste it. Oh, it tastes great. Mm, let's have a go. Hmm. Yes, it seems all right. I must say, you've done ever so well. Getting the fire going and the clock's ticking. Here's Jane with the shopping. Hmm? She's carrying so much, she can hardly walk. <laughs> Another miracle. All those heavy bags from the car and never a murmur. Well, we're enjoying ourselves. It's different when you're doing your own thing. Oh. Oh, oh, my hands are all blistered. Show me. Nothing. Hey, we're a nine days wonder in the village. Oh, what's that? Well, everyone's staring at me and, and, and the woman in the shop asked me how long we were staying. No, and I no. said only a week to start with. And she said, just as well, my beauty, just as well. I wonder what she meant by that. Cholera. Typhoid. Dysentery. Double pneumonia from damp beds. Hey, Tim. Mummy made a joke. Oh, you're quite good fun, really, Mum. <laughs> quite different when Dad's not around. Really? My only worry at this point, Vicar, was how I was going to explain all this to Philip. <laughs> He'd just call it another of my crazy ideas. Mm. So I walked up to the phone box in the village that evening, half hoping it would be out of order. Philip? This is Philip Timpley oh, speaking. Damn. I'm sorry I'm not available at the moment, but if you leave your name and <clears throat> number, I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Please do not speak until after the tone. Please state the time of your call. 
Don't forget to leave me the number you're calling from. <clears throat> Hello, it's me. We're staying at Beach Cottage, Walney. I cancelled the hotel. Explain later. We have no telephone number, but... Oh. Mm. He'll think I'm mad. Well, let him. See if I care. You see, Vicar, I felt totally shattered with all the hassle. And yet I felt young again. Only as young as my kids. I began to wonder what Philip had been doing to me all those years. Here we are. Hot chocolates. Good Lord. Mm, cheers. Mum, mm -hmm. I brought my new ghost book. Will you read us a story, like you used to? You read so well. <laughs> if you really want me to. Yeah. There. I suppose this place is quite ghosty. What do you mean? It's all right, Mum. Just a bit mysterious, that's all. Well, how, for heaven's sake? Well, this was old Mr Yaxley's house, right? Mm -hmm. His wellies by the back door, his dirty breakfast dishes still on the table, and Miss Yaxley's just inherited it, right? Yes. So, why is everything seven years out of date? As if nothing's been touched here for seven years. Well, it's something legal, I expect. Legal and boring. <laughs> Poor old mum. Mm. We won't let it get you, mummy. Promise. <laughs> yes, promise, mum. Now, let's have a good ghosty story. Mm. Enjoy your cuppa, mummy. Mm. Breakfast ready. Oh, well, must get myself moving. Yes, you must. There's a man at the door. Says what? he's come to do for us. Oh. What's he been do for us? I asked him that, but he just dropped his eyes and shuffled. Oh. I asked him in too, but he wouldn't come. What does he look like? He's got, um, muddy wellies and hairy arms and well, he pongs a bit. Oh, God. He looks like a dog. Quite a nice old dog. Oh, he says he's called Nathan Go to Bed. Oh. <laughs> Isn't that a scream? Oh, shut up, I'll hear you. Morning, missus. Morning. I, I, I've come to see to the, uh, uh... The garden? Mm. Oh, yes, uh, I see. The loo. Uh, always saw to it in Sippy Axley's day. Uh, twice a week, though three times is better. That keep it nice and sweet. Uh, well, yes, uh, by all means, three times a week will do nicely. Do you want paying for the... Uh, uh, pay at the end of the week. Ah. When you're satisfied, that's nice and sweet. And uh, where do you want it put? Uh, when I empties it. Uh, where do you suggest? Well, Sepp always like a duck in his potato patch. Give him some powerful good taters. But you ain't got a tater patch no more. I think you'd better just take it away. Away. Right. There's plenty as will be glad of it. Mixed with a rare lot of ashes. Ashes will do you all right. Uh, oh, yes. Ashes will be fine. Uh, just give him a good stir with a stick every time you use it. Uh -huh. That'll keep it nice and sweet. I'll come and fetch it after dark. What the eye don't see, the heart don't grieve. <laughs> Quite. Anything else you want seeing to? I, 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 I only do outside, you know. Do you think you could weed the garden? Hmm? Yes, uh, weed it, but leave any nice plants. There seem to have been some rose bushes. Oh, Sepp was a great one for roses in his day. How long has Mr Yaxley been... Gone? Hmm. Seven years in July. His death must have been a sad loss. Death? said he was dead. Sepp's been gone this seven year. But I didn't ever say dead. I'll be off to, to see the things. Sepp's been gone this seven year. I didn't say dead. Tim, when are you having your outside scene to, Mummy? <laughs> You'll hear us. Then who'll do for us? Oh, I hate housework. Better do this sitting room as well. Actually, it was rather fun. More like archaeology than housework. Well, what did you find? Well, I was learning a lot about Seppi Axley. From the clothes hanging in his wardrobe, he was a big man. Mm -hmm. Six or two at least. Yes. And he had an old-fashioned pair of lace-up boots. Collar studs, braces. A lot of old pipes in the pipe rack. Must have been a heavy smoker. And spills of newspaper in the fireplace. Oh, I didn't believe in wasting matches. Oh, 
July the 2nd, 1981. This is positively creepy. But he had nice, tidy bookshelves. What did he read? No paperbacks for him. Good old hardbacks. Oh, Marx. Oh, not an average ignorant farmer. Oldmore's Almanac. Foster Thomas. Certainly not your average farmer. Hmm. A Bible. God knows the year, but... 1981. And then I found a pocket watch and chain. Silver, by the look of it. It was an antique. Well, what kind of man goes off and leaves a valuable watch behind? And why hadn't Miss Yaxley taken it in for safekeeping? Must have been here for seven years. With the back door unlocked. Mark, oh, it's ever so funny. We help oh. to go to bed in the garden and people keep on walking past carrying the stupidest things like a garden rake or a cabbage. Oh. Or down the path that only leads to the sea. They're having a nosy at us. What makes us so interesting? I don't know. Oh, look, there's some more of them now. Oh. Under the window. How are you getting on? Oh, I'm all right, Tom. This will be the little girl, then. Uh, that's right. They keep on doing that, like we were animals in a zoo. What do they want? Oh, country people just lead such quiet lives. Newcomers are an event. Would you like some more bread, Chris? Yes, please. Uh, here you are. Thank you. Mr. Gotobed brought a great barrow load of ashes just before lunch. Mm. She be right sweet, no, she be. <laughs> but he wouldn't go into the wash house next door. We tried to show him that black yuck liquid in the boiler, but he wouldn't come near it. Mm. Don't you ever go in there, little master and missus. Oh, don't be silly. All right, you try him. Try offering him ten quid to empty that stuff from the boiler. Look, you mustn't pester him and make fun of him. It's cruel. And besides, suppose he didn't come back. We'd be in a right mess then, wouldn't we? Do you want to walk up to Missy Axley's every time you want the loo? Yeah. <clears throat> He's dead scared of cats, too. How do you know that? Cat came. It sat on the wall. He threw clods of earth at it. Said cats were nasty, dirty creatures. Said folks should never prosper that kept a cat. Rubbish. What sort of cat was it? Just an old black and white thing. It's OK, he didn't hit it. It dodged. We never saw it again. He says he's going to lay the hedge this afternoon. Mm. He's brought great thick leather gloves and a bill hook that could cut you in half with one swipe. It's really sharp. It can cut single blades of grass. Oh, right. And you two can wash up before he starts and make the most of the fresh air. Mm. I'll get back to cleaning that sitting room with the dust in it. Sick, it's choking me to death. I need a gas mask. You're supposed to be on holiday, Mum. He's only cleaning up in case Dad comes. Aren't you, Mum? No, I'm not. Well, you'll miss Mr. Go to bed laying the hedge. Well, I can watch him through the window. I've got it open to let the dust out. Oh, God. <coughs> What's this? It was then I found a strange looking book. Written by hand and sewn together by hand. What's the cover made of? It's all pale and crinkly. It wasn't leather. It was too thin. Oh, it could almost be human skin. Oh, it can't be. Oh, it must be vellum or something. Mr. Go to bed says, will you come and see what he's done so far? Oh, that's wonderful, Mr. Go to bed. Uh, Very neat. Oh. And it makes the garden look so much bigger. Oh, I'll have that all laid by tonight. <laughs> Oh, this isn't the right scene of a hedge lad, really. Oh? That's went to work. There's nothing else to do. Ah. But the old hedge will come again all right. In the old days, my brother and I could lay a hundred yards a hedge a day. Gosh. Well, you must be so dry. Uh, can I offer you a drink? Uh, what of, missus? Coffee? A tin of Coke? Coke will do fine, missus. I do like a nice... All right. <laughs> well, come into the kitchen, then, and have a sit in the cool. I'll just get the Coke... Right, um... Ah, here it is. Nathan? Nathan? Where have you gone to? Out here in the garden, missus. Oh. 
Sir Boris let me sit on this here garden seat when I was having my break. Oh, were you coming to the cool? Into the kitchen? Yeah, no, no, Mrs. No. I, I, I'm all right where I am. Uh, here. Thanks for the coat, Mrs. A bit later. I was just finishing my marathon dust and I found a little tin on the mantelpiece. Oh, oh God, heavens, it weighs a ton. It must be full of lead. sit down. I think I'd rather stand. Let me give you this. Oh, oh you brought Sepp's old watch. I'm glad to have that. It was his father's before him. And this? And his sovereigns. I always like his sovereigns, this Sepp. Said they'd never rot. My children might have taken them, not knowing what they were. I knew you had an honest face. Or I wouldn't have let you rent the cottage. I knew you'd bring them up. Yes, but that's not the point. <laughs> They've been lying in that house for seven years, with the back door unlocked. We don't have young tearaways round here. Oh, you amaze me. Anyway, nobody around here would dare to touch Sepp's things. Why not? It was in the hands of the lawyers. Sepp wasn't legally dead till this July. Seven year it takes. We couldn't touch none of his stuff. It was again the law. <laughs> then why didn't the lawyers take charge of the valuables? They probably didn't know he had any. Well, why didn't you tell them? They never asked me. <laughs> Would you mind telling me exactly what happened to your brother, Miss Yaxley? He just vanished. Went out one morning, never came back. I don't even know what morning it was. He always came up here for his tea every Friday. He didn't come that week. Second week he didn't come, I told the police. But didn't the police search for him? They did, but... Well, Seth went out on the salt marshes a lot. Caught things. The tide can be treacherous and the currents can carry a body away miles. Seven years you have to wait before you can declare him dead, if there's no body. But, but surely you could have cleared up his house. I've got enough to do here. Seth and me, we weren't all that close. <laughs> I find all this totally incredible. It ain't none of your business, is it? You come down here in your big motor car with your two spoiled children. What do we matter to you? You can go or stay as you like. I, I'm sorry. It, it, it's, it is none of my business. No bones broken, my dear. Thank you for bringing Sepp's things. The money will come in handy. So we, we can stay on at the cottage? Stay as long as you like, my dear. Though what you find to do about her... Where's Mr Gotobed? He's not finished the hedge. Hmm? Oh, a man came for him. They had an argument. What about? We couldn't hear. Oh. Did you find out anything about Set Yaxley? From Miss Yaxley? How did you know I was going to see her? Oh, we just guessed. You were carrying that watch and tin and walked off looking so cross. Mr Yaxley got drowned by the tide on the marshes. That's a general theory, anyway. Oh, that's odd. Well, what's odd, for heaven's sake? Him getting drowned on the marshes. I would have thought he'd have worn his wellies to go on the marshes, but his wellies are still here. Oh. This is ridiculous. Everyone knows something and they're not saying. Even my own children. 
<laughs> they must all think I'm a fool. Well, I'm not. I'm off to the village shop. My turn for a nosy. Good afternoon. Aha, tractor's down at last, I see. Welcome to Walney. Thank you. From London, are we? Richmond, actually. How did you know where I came from? Well, a garage name on your car is big enough. I'm a Londoner too. We city folk must stick together amongst these local yokels. Actually, I rather like country people. Shouldn't you be serving these people before me? Oh, don't you worry about them. They've only come in for a good gossip. They're not busy city ladies like you. My name's Jack Sydenham from Catford. Put it there. Three boxes of matches, please. Big smoker, then. Oil lamps to light. Yeah, didn't have many mod cons, said Yaxney. Here, you found his crock of gold, have you? Set was famous for the crock of gold he had stashed away. Jack, we need some more Pepsi. Go round to the back and get me two cases. I'll see to the lady. But all I want Don't to... stand there arguing, just go. Oh, for crying out loud. No, my dear. What else can I get you? You better be in tonight, Philip. I want to know why not. Oh, come on. This is Philip Timberley speaking. Oh! He's doing this just to punish me. Well, we'll see who can last out the longest. I won't be upset. It's a lovely evening. Mm. Oh! Hello, Puss. What are you doing out here at this time of night? Like your ears rubbed? Oh! I don't want your ears rubbed. I don't want to be strode. In fact, you want nothing whatever to do with me. Well, good night, unfriendly Puss. How's the march, Tim? <clears throat> Thanks. Like some more cheese. No, thanks. Mm. Oh, Mr. Gotobe's going to build you a rockery. Oh, a rockery? What of a for? You can't beat a nice little rockery, my dear, with little plants are growing here <laughs> and there. But I don't want a rockery. And Miss Yaxley hasn't even been consulted. I know. We told him that. But he said you'd like a rockery and went off in a hurry. <sighs> hey, he's back with three barrelloads of stones. Hmm, two hunky blokes stripped to the waist. What brown? Jane, come away from that window this oh, instant. Oh, What's this? They dumped a stone in our gateway. A lot. And lots of old hunky. What a mess. I think they're going back for more. Oh, no, this is dreadful. Mr. Go to bed. Mr. Go to bed. Well, I suppose they've done their best. At least they've put the concrete to the back and you can't see the rusty wires. <laughs> what do you want a rockery for? I told you. The rabbits. What? I think Mr. Gotobin hates rabbits even more than cats. He sets snares to catch them. Snares? Yeah. Where? Look, I won't have snares in this garden. They're the cruelest things imaginable. The rabbit comes running and puts its head through the wire loop and the more the rabbit struggles, the tighter it gets. And It ends up choking in its own blood. <sighs> Where are these snares? I'll have them out. And then I'll speak to Mr. Gotobed tomorrow. Poor Mr. Gotobed. <sighs> What's that? Oh. <gasps> Who's that? Shh, Tim, it's you. Only the air pistol Dad gave me last Christmas. Thought it might come in useful in these outlandish parts. Oh, Tim, what earthly good is an air pistol? Don't knock it. It's a point two two. It can go through an inch thick plank of wood at fifty yards. Dad and I tried it down the pit. Tim, you wouldn't shoot. Bloody wood. <gasps> <gasps> oh, this is black as hell out here. What's going on? Where's it coming from? Can you see anything? Uh, there it is. Where? On our new rockery. Oh God. Tomcats. Tomcats 
fighting. No, there's only one cat. Oh. It's not fighting. It's sitting on the rock and yelling its head off. Oh, oh. it's dreadful. Oh, my God, I wish I would stop. Should I take a pause at it? Tim, how could you? Go on, Tim. No. Not to kill it, stupid. Just to scare it or hit it in the tail. He's a dead shot, you know. Tim, I absolutely forbid it. The cat will go away soon. All mm, right. Oh, but I'll have to fire the air pistol at something. I can't unload it. I know the new door. Oh, Tim, no! <laughs> but there's a hole right through that door. Perhaps you'd care to show it to Missy Axley in the morning. Oh, no. Meanwhile, bed. Night, Mum. Night, night. Night, Mum. Night. Oh. <coughs> and next morning, while I battled with the dust again, Terrified, I suppose, of Philip turning up. Something else turned up instead. Hmm? What is this funny old book again? What language is it written in? I don't recognise it at all. The writing was tiny. I, I couldn't see it in the gloom. So I took it to the window. That's better. You wanted to speak to me, missus? Uh, did I? About some snares. Oh. Oh. Oh, my heart alive. Mr. Glutabin. Oh, my God. Are you all right? Oh, no. Oh, oh no. Mr. Glutabin, what's oh. wrong? Come back. Oh, hey, what have you done to Mr. Glutabin, Mum? He looked frightened out of his wits. I thought he was having a fit. You do look a bit of a fright in the mornings, Mum. Look, this is serious. <laughs> he was really scared. Hey, your shirt's hanging out below your jumper. What? Perhaps you drove his lust to breaking point. Be serious. <laughs> this is awful. What's that, Mum? What? That book. Oh, I've no idea. Well, that's what terrified him. <gasps> ah, it is a book of evil spells. Yeah, or, or old Yaxley's secret diary. Yeah, yeah. with the terrible truth about uh, Mr. Gotobed. Yeah. Owing marijuana on his allotment. Getting the milkmaids pregnant. Oh, don't be so silly. <laughs> But he's left his wheelbarrow and tools and everything. Oh. What will we do if he doesn't come back? Yeah, who's going to do for us then? I'd better go and talk to him, I suppose. Well, he's terrified of you. He's not terrified of us. We'll go and talk to him. Yeah. Take him back his wheelbarrow. That'll make a good excuse. Oh, all right. Uh, and if he won't come back, ask him how much we owe him. You're not going to go on dusting, are you? You've been cleaning forever. Oh, no. No, I think I'll go for a walk down to the sea. The waves always soothe me. Boy, do I need soothing. So I set off down the path. I didn't like it. No? Too straight and narrow. If you met somebody, you couldn't avoid them, even if you saw them coming miles off. Why do I suddenly want to avoid people? I usually like meeting people in the country. They smile and say hello. But then... I noticed the back of my neck was tingling. Someone's following me. But I wouldn't look round. It's too silly. But there was. There was someone following me. I stopped. Morning. Nice morning for a walk. Well, Mr. Sydenham, are you... Uh... Taking the day off? Things slack at the shop? Got a few things to do. Down at the beach. Fishing? Just things. I'll walk along with you. Lead on. Look, I, I think it's wide enough to walk two abreast here. More companionable. You enjoying your holiday, then? I'd have thought you'd have found as dull, after all the things you're used to. What things are those? Foreign holidays, Tunisia, Indonesia... Uh, my husband can't get away at the moment. His firm's so busy. He's hoping to get down for the weekend. Only hoping. He must be busy. Yes, they are. Can't imagine a high-powered businessman like your husband taking to a dump like Sepp Yaxley's. <laughs> I'd have thought he'd won a five-star hotel. Well, he likes curious old things. Like me. I wouldn't have called you a curious old thing, Mrs. <laughs> Well, here we are at the beach. I'll, uh, I'll wish you good morning. So, what kind of curious old things do you like? What do you get up to in Richmond for a good night out? Still wife swapping? I beg your pardon? Or is it black magic rituals these days? What are you talking about? Well, that's what we read about in the papers. I'm afraid I don't read that kind of paper. So you are a reader, then? 
What kind of books? Except Yaxley was a great man for books. Yes, he had a lot of books. Old Nathan, he said you'd found one of Sepp's own books. He saw you reading it. Oh, that? Well, I couldn't make head or tail of it. Really? Not a thing. It was in some sort of foreign language or shorthand or something. Can I borrow it for a bit? I used to be able to read shorthand. Did a bit at night school. It wasn't that sort. Look, let me borrow it. I'll give it you back. Safe. It's not mine to lend. It's Miss Yaxley's. You'll have to ask her. You give me that book. You'll have no more bother with... Let me go! You're hurting my wrist. What do you mean, bother? Bother from who? You don't know this lot around here like I know them. They're like nobody you ever met. They're peasants, ignorant peasants. And when they they get the wrong idea... Let go of my wrist! What the hell was that? My air pistol. If you lay a hand on my mother again, the holes will be in your head, not your hat. Here! This was a good hat. I paid 20 quid for this. Oh, bloody well... You won't. This pistol's loaded again, and it's pointing straight at your face. Have you got a licence for that thing? I'm going to the police. Please do, and I can tell them how you were manhandling my mother. Common assault, if not indecent assault, eh, Jane? And three witnesses against one. You haven't got a prayer, chum. I should push off if I were you while you still can. Ah... Uh... That gun wasn't loaded, was it? When you were pointing it at his face. Damn well was. Watch that old tin jump. <laughs> Tim, stop! I don't think you ought to have that gun. Not until you're older. Would you rather have been raped, Mummy dear? Timothy! It wasn't after me. He wanted that book of Seb Yaxley's. What? The secret diary? We'll have to have a look at that. Oh, God. Now, well, meanwhile, Mr. Godabed's wheelbarrow is still sitting in the middle of the village street. What? We just got to the village when we saw that creep following you down the path. We ran like hell. Oh, Tim, Jane. It's all right, Mum. See ya. Oh. Don't hang about now, will you? Yeah, go straight home. You're the only mum we've got. Bye. Oh, God. It was a little while later that the kids got back to the garden. Hey, Jen. What? There's a cat watching us. Where? On our fence. It's huge. A real whopper. Oh, open the gate slowly. Don't scare it. Look at his ears. They're torn to ribbons. I wonder how many fights he's been in. I bet he won them. He doesn't look a nice sort of cat at all. Well, you better scarper then. He's coming over. Maybe he likes girls for his dinner. <laughs> he's just standing there, staring at us. Well, I expect he's just lonely. Aren't you, Tiger? Let's see if he likes having what's left of his ears stroked. Careful, Tim. There. Oh. See? <laughs> You're a real old softy. <laughs> Paring his head off. Oh, not bad. What have you got there? Our new cat. Our new tiger. Isn't he massive? I don't think you should encourage it. I'll bet that's the one that was making the row all night. Mm. I met it on the path yesterday. They didn't make friends with me. Well, that just shows that cats have got taste. <laughs> Watch it. Did you see Mr. Go to bed? We had to go to his sister's cottage. She said he'd gone to bed and wouldn't talk to us. <laughs> but we showed her the wheelbarrow and said we'd come to say we were sorry. And would he still come and do for us? So she went upstairs and nagged him something terrible. And when he came down, he was wearing his wellies, same as usual. <laughs> what did he say? He was very jumpy. But he took us to see his vegetable garden. He asked us a lot of questions about you. Me? Well, what did he tell him? He asked us if you'd ever cured our warts, and we said yes. What? With brown stuff out of a bottle from the chemist. And then he asked if you'd ever found things for people. <laughs> we said you were better at losing things than finding them. That seemed to cheer him up. Oh, oh, and then he asked about the book you were waving about this morning. We said you just found it while you were dusting. He said if you promised to burn that book, he'd come back and do for us. Did he? Uh, look, uh, I'll see you later. Mum? Where's she going? Mum! What is it now? I came to ask you about this book I found. It must be one of your brothers. I don't want that. Shove it on the fire, that'll sell the dried thing. But it's old. It, it might be valuable, of historic interest. You keep it then. But it, it was a pain and a botheration to me all my life. I don't want reminding of him. Well, thank you very much. If you take my advice... You'll burn it. You don't know what you've got there. 
But God has no mercy on the ignorant. He weren't a bad man. Just a meddling old fool who thought he was something he wasn't. What he did, they wanted him to do. They beat the path to his front door. Then they turned against him. Them that made him do such things. What things? I told you to burn the book. That's on your head now. I got things to do. Well, I'm sorry. Oh, you've got company. A gentleman to see you. Bye. She bring the book? I told her to burn it. But she wouldn't. She's keeping it. You can't hold that against me. Ah, well. She must take the consequences. Oh, come on, Philip, come on. Just be home for once. This is Philip Timothy. Oh, damn. Me. I'm sorry I'm not available. He's just trying to punish me for upsetting his plans. I'll get back to you as soon as trying to frighten me into rushing home Please like a naughty child. Please not speak until after the toe. Please stop the time of your call. Two can play at that Don't game. Let him sweat. Don't forget the number you are calling from. Oh, damn. Hello, Philip. I'll ring you again tomorrow night. Do try to be in. I have a little problem I could do with your advice. There, that'll fetch him out of his hole. A nice little problem to advise me on. <gasps> it was then I saw something scrawled on my car. Yes? Which? And they'd scratched the paintwork doing it. And I managed to rub it out. It had just been written in the dirt on the door. But of course now they knew I'd seen it. Starting to hate this place. But they weren't going to drive me out. I'll leave when I'm good and ready. What a welcome scene. All right, Mum. Hi. Oh, you both look up. There's a cosy sitting there. But why did you bring in that cat? Oh. I told you not to encourage it. It's lost and hungry. We gave it a Cornish pasty and it ate the lot. Even the crumbs. People have tried to shoot it. Look, Mum. What? All little scars down one side. Mm -hmm. And a shotgun pellet came out when I picked it one. The people around here must be foul. Yeah. Oh, yes. The people around here are rather foul, I'm afraid. Even Mr. Gotobed. What? We've been thinking about it. We don't think he set those snares to catch a rabbit. Mm -hmm. There aren't any rabbits around here. There are no rabbit droppings. We think he set the snares to catch this cat. Why would he want to catch a cat? Oh, because it was digging in our garden, I suppose. Because mm. if there are no rabbits, this cat dug those holes. Cats don't dig burrows. They dig holes to bury their crap droppings. Oh, I suppose so. But there weren't any droppings in the holes. Anyway, what harm could it do in a hopeless garden like ours? Uh, perhaps Mr. Gotobed's got more grand plans for the garden. Mm. Like that stupid rockery of his. We mustn't be rude to him, the loo. I won't be rude to him. But we're not friends of his anymore. Poor Mr. Gotobed. Well, I suppose the cat can stay till bedtime. Oh, good. Then you must make sure it goes out, Jane, right? Right. Now then. Quick game of Scrabble. OK. All right. God, what's that? Oh, this is the damn cat. Still here. Oh, I'll kill them. I told them to put it out. And Timothy! Timothy! Your damn cat's loose downstairs. Oh, uh, let's see what it's up to. I've got my torch. Oh, there you go. Get it out of the house. It's like a mad thing. It must have rabies or something. Shoo! Shoo! Get away! Go on, get away! It's taking no notice. Look, you open the front door and I'll throw it out. Come in. Oh, God! Bid me! Throw me that tennis racket. Oh, Look! Oh. Out, you Bruce! Go on! Out! 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 Did it go 
out the front door? I don't know. You shouldn't have hit it, Mum. It wasn't doing you any harm. Oh, that's what you think. Shine your torch here. Oh, oh Mum. I've got blood on my nightdress. Here. Hold your hand under the pump. Cold water will stop the bleeding. What the hell's going on? Do you know what time it is? Look at Mum's hand. Oh. Hold on. I'll get the first aid kit. I'm really great with first aid. There. You hold the torch, Mum. Here, I'll get the plaster out. How's the thing gone? Seems like it. Well, make sure the front door's locked in. Okay. Oh, maybe I should go and see a doctor. I need to throw me getting dressed. I'll just die quietly of rabies. It's far less bother. Oh, oh, come on. Let's get back to bed. Come on. Oh, God! Leave this to me, Mum. Come on, follow me. Let's study what the cat's doing scientifically. It obviously wants to get into the sitting room, so... Look, what are we going to do? Shh. Tim, what are you doing? Letting it in. No! It's clawing at that big cupboard. What does it want? What does it want? It wants what's in the cupboard, Mum. Dear... God, what can be in there? The door's taller than a man. The wall it's set in is three feet thick. Dear God. Sep Yaxley? Sep Yaxley's body? Or... I think we'd better open that cupboard, Mum. But it's locked. Well, I can pick locks easy. Johnson Shepherd showed me last holiday. We picked oh. every lock in his father's house. I'll just get my Swiss Army knife. Oh, your brother's a trained criminal. Right. Come and hold the torch for me, Mum. Oh, no, steadier than that. Sorry. Try using both hands. Oh, come on, I'll do it. You're a proper wet lettuce, Mum. I must sit down. My legs are like jelly. What's the matter with me? There could be a corpse behind that door, and I'm just letting them. It's giving. It's coming. Oh, hold the torch steady, Dimbo. I am. So cool. So heartless. Just looking for kicks. There. Oh, he's only jars. Oh, big glass jars and loads of books. All that fuss about nothing. Well, this one's got dead frogs in. We got those in the bio lab at school. Anyway, they're not frogs. They're toads. In a jar of newts. I love biology. We had to dissect a frog at school, and mine was full of frog spawn. I spent a whole morning scraping out the eggs, and then we had tapioca for school dinner. Oh, <laughs> this one looks full of it. Mmm, want some to eat, my dear? <laughs> you have a nice supper, kinky brother. Who says I'm kinky? Half the girls in my class. I have fights with girls who think you're kinky. Mm. I needn't have bothered. They were right. I'm going back to bed. Jane? Hey, Mum, there's some jolly old stuff in here. I think there's a baby in one of these jars. What rubbish! Really, Tim, you're quite impossible. Oh, look! It must be a chimpanzee fetus. Oh, go on, it's human. Sunday supplements are full of them. I wonder how he got it. I think we ought to go back to bed. All of this will seem quite different in the morning. It's a funny old bloke, set me, actually. I wonder where he really is. Come on, bed. It's all right, boss. Mum didn't mean it. It's quite nice, really. <laughs> it's the first time she's hit anything with a tennis racket for ages. Aww. You're quite safe. My hand's throbbing where it bit me. You better get to the doctor's then and have injections. Oh, it's nothing. I don't want to bother the doctor. He'll be busy. If it was one of us, you'd have taken us already. Mm. What if you got rabies or tetanus? How can we look after you? Don't drive the car. Oh, I've never known such a hard faced pair of. All right, I'll go. How on earth did you let yourself be bitten by a cat? 
Still, if you encourage strays into your house... It wasn't my house. It's a holiday cottage. The cat might have lived there. Surely you were told whether it lived there or not. Well, Miss Yaxley never said. Nori Yaxley can't abide cats. She wouldn't let a cat near her. We're not staying at Miss Yaxley's. We're at her brother's cottage. Sep Yaxley's cottage? Did you know Sep Yaxley? Oh, I knew Sep Yaxley all right. Enough of my patients were suffering at his hands. I was gathering evidence that would have sent him to prison for a very long time. Only the evidence was hard to come by and he vanished before I was ready to go to the police. What for? What had he done? Oh, well, it's best not to speak ill of the dead, though I'm half inclined to make an exception in the case of Sep Yaxley. Well, no doubt he's gone to his reward. Meanwhile, I think we'll give you a couple of jabs. We don't want you going down with something nasty in your charming country cottage. Roll up your sleeves, please. Oh. Nora Yaxley must be out of her mind letting that cottage. Senile decay setting in, I shouldn't wonder. Well, after that, Vicar, I came straight round to see you. <laughs> My father always said no one knows his parish like a vicar. He should know what he was talking about. He was one. Really? Oh, but all this seems so trivial now. Sitting here in the sun with the birds singing. I feel I'm wasting your time. Not at all. Not at all. I can believe every word of it. There's always trouble when a cunning man dies. A what? A cunning man. A herbal healer. A charmer of warts. What you or I would call a quack. Oh. Every village in East Anglia used to have one, in the bad old days before the NHS. There's a book by Richard Deacon. He writes of a man called Cunning Morell, who lived on the Essex border. When he died, they could find no one who would dare clear out his house. That house stood untouched for months, until they could persuade Buck Morell, his son, to do the job. And, and he had to come halfway across England. I suppose he was another cunning man. What's so frightening about charming warts? There was a... a darker side. It was believed they could blight crops. <laughs> there was a lot of call for that around the time of the village fruit and flower shows. Oh, how childish! Spiteful! And worse. It was said they could blight livestock. What? And even people. Oh. Make men impotent and give their wives miscarriages. Oh. Cunning Morell used to take money from one man to put on a blight and, and money from another to take it off again. So he made a profit both ways. <laughs> it's like the Dark Ages. Well, East Anglia is not your home counties. Though God knows what they get up to in the home counties. But Walney is backward, even for East Anglia. As they say here in Cleet, there's only one road into Walney and the same road out again. There's a lot of inbreeding. Cleet people say that there are only five different faces in Walney, that they occur over and over again in each generation. Oh. Mind you, people here have got a down on Walney. Walney is sort of bottom of the heap locally. Mm. But Walney people are narrow and easily upset. Then they tend to get violent. One of my young parishioners was unwise enough to go courting a Walney girl. The Walney youths half killed him, chased him out of the village, set fire to his motorbike into the bargain. He took the hint, married a girl from Cromer. Didn't the police do anything? Our local Bobby here knew he'd never get to the bottom of it. Walney folks stick together. They all tell the same story. Now there was nothing he could do. Why have they picked on a poor cat? Ah. Well, Sep Yaxley had a striped cat, a big, ugly beast. They said it disappeared the same time as he did. Perhaps they think yours is the same cat come back. After seven years? Cats can live a lot longer than seven years. When they took against Sep, they took against the cat. There, there was a lot of stupid talk. What kind of stupid talk? Look, Nora Yaxley has been rather naughty. She's never been liked in Walney, and she's used you to do her dirty work for her. 
and the dirt's landed on you. It's not your fault, but you'll never get them to believe that. You mean they, they think sh she employed me to clear up Sepp's cottage? At that time... Why not just get out of the place? Oh. Today. It's just not your problem. If you're stuck for a place to stay, I'm sure my wife can put you up for the night while you make other arrangements. I'll come with you now, if you like. Help you clear out your things. With me there, you won't... you won't have any trouble. He believes everything he's saying. He must know what he's talking about. And yet... he's just like Philip. Another bossy male who knows what's best for me. Protecting the helpless little woman who can't be left alone five minutes without getting herself into a mess. I am not a child. I got myself into this mess and I shall jolly well get myself out of it. I shall leave Walney under my own steam. When I say so. Thank you. You're very kind. But there's no need to put yourself up running after me. I'm sure I can manage. Well, it's your life. But please leave soon. Today, if possible. And do be careful what you do and say. Oh, God, it's no good. I must speak to Philip. He'll sort things out. If he's in a meeting, he can bloody well come out of it. I am his wife. Good. The phone box is empty. Now, some change. Oh, hell, not a penny. Oh, I'll have to go into that damn shop. Look, it's only a shop, like any other shop. It sells things. It's got a living to make. It's my obedient servant. Oh, hell. It's full of people. Oh, it would be. Well, here goes. The soul has turned their head to look at me. But they all know it's me. They're making me feel like I don't exist. Damn them. Six cans of Coke, please. I'm afraid I can't serve you, madam. Can't serve me? Why ever not? No reason. Don't have to have a reason. Oh, that's just stupid. We can serve who we like and not serve who we don't like. Oh, come on. Be sensible. It's within my legal rights not to serve troublemakers. Don't oh, go to hell, a lot of you. You're nothing but a bunch of ignorant pigs. I hope you all roast in hell. <gasps> What have I said? What have I said? Tim? Jane? Where are you? You're in the sitting room. Oh. Smell this green powder, Mum. Doesn't have pong. Give her a sniff, Tim. <laughs> what on earth do you think you're doing? You've got stuff everywhere. The cat wanted another nosy in the cupboard, and so did we. Put everything back this instant. Be careful, Mummy, or we'll turn you into a frog or a slug. If I make this sign of the uh, evil eye. I left her nice and sweet. Uh, oh, hello. Oh. Oh, my God. Oh, oh my God. Out a bit. I can explain everything. Oh, no. No. Oh. No. What's got into him now? I'll tell you what's got into him. He looks in at that window, and what does he see? Jane with a devil cat, spills and potions everywhere. Oh. And you making the sign of the evil eye? Oh. It'll be all round the village. What the hell do you think you were doing? Looking for treasure. Yeah, we found it. Yeah. Five of gold sovereigns, Mum. Mm. They're worth about 50 pounds each, you know. Well, Miss Yatsley give us a reward. Oh, yeah, finders should get 10%. I could buy a new bike. There's another book of Sep Yatsley's, too. And you can read this one. It's an account book. Give that to me. Charming award for MJ, two pounds. To finding AM's purse, five pounds. To putting a blight on MP's roses, ten pounds. To Q 
you want to see Earl of her child? Thirty pounds. Oh. God, I feel sick. What does he mean to curing C.L. of her child? I'm going up to see Miss Yaxley. I, I won't be long. Stay close to the house and don't do anything. Don't forget our reward for the sovereign. We'd like in cash, please. No checks. Oh, oh, there you are. Gosh, you gave me a fright sitting there in the dark. Why didn't you answer? Miss Yaxley? Miss Yaxley? Oh, my God, she's cold. I'm cold. Look, here's a rug. Here. Shall I... Look, I, I'll put the kettle on. Oh, gosh, no wonder you're cold. The whole house is freezing. They broke my windows. What? They broke all my windows. Oh, my God, what a mess. Every window in every room. Who's done this? We must ring the police. No, no police, no police. Make it worse. But we must. It was them bikers. Uh, I didn't see you did it. Oh, it was dozing. You can't stay here now. No. You should be in hospital. No, no, not hospital. Where then? My sister. In Sheringham. Go there. Is she on the phone? Right. What's her number? The taxi man's got your suitcase, Miss Axley. Now... Uh, you've got your handbag and money? Yes. Oh, leave me your keys. Here. And I'll wait for the man to come and board up your windows and, and lock up after him. Then I'll post your key on to you at your sister's. God bless you. Take care of yourself. Yes. And your children. Bastards. They might have killed her. Could ring the police. Still, if that's what she wants. Shall I ring Philip? No, he'll only say I'm being stupid, making a mountain out of a molehill. He'll lecture me and tell me to come home. If he isn't in the conference and not available. Oh, hell. Philip Timple is office. Miss Sampson speaking. It's Rose. Could I speak to my husband? I'm afraid he's in conference till five. He specifically told me to let no calls through. Uh, yes. It's a crucial meeting, Mrs. Timpley. The autumn schedules. If you'd like to leave a message... Oh, don't bother. Is there a problem? Damn right there's a problem. You should try asking the Vicar of Cleet if there's a problem. I beg your pardon. Forget it. I hope you're enjoying your little holiday. Oh. Hello, Cleet Vicarage. Uh, could I speak to the vicar, please? Oh, I'm afraid he's at a meeting. Oh. I'm not expecting him home till six. Can I take a message? No, thank you very much. Are you sure? Quite sure. Thank you. Tim! Jane! Are you all right? You've been ages. We had to have bread and jam for tea. What are you up to? Gardening? I'm digging for buried treasure. You seem to have got half a garden on your shoes. What do you mean, buried treasure? Like we found in the cupboard this morning. We thought there might be something here, too, under this stupid rockery. But why here? The cat was digging here again, scrabbling away like mad. And have you found anything? Oh, well, only a rotten old boot. We can't even get that out of the hole. It's caught on something underground. We can get it to waggle. We won't come out. Oh. Oh, it's all right. We'll fill in the hole and leave everything tidy. Oh, we'll never fit, Mum. Oh, God. What's making that revolting smell? What else have you found? A dead rat? Nothing, Mum. Honest. Oh, guess it's vile. It's like something that's got left in the fridge for a month. Timothy, oh. it's on you. It's all over you. 
Oh, you stink! And you, James? What have you been doing? Nothing, just digging. It's even in your hair. Oh, sorry, the hole got smellier and smellier. We just thought it was something Mr. Gold had buried from the loo. Oh, God. I'm going for the police. Was there anyone watching you while you dug? Yeah, there were three of them. Bolt the door. Bolt both the doors. And fasten the windows. And don't answer the door to anybody. If I keep low behind the hedge, nobody will see me. Car keys. Where are my car keys? Once I'm locked in the car, they can't touch me. If they try to stalk me, I'll... I'll drive straight over them, I swear it. Good. Nobody inside. A quick dash across the road. and they're beaten. Oh, a door's open. I'm sure I locked it. Oh. God, they've cut it off. <laughs> Hello, miss. We've come to fetch you home. What? Back to your children. In at the gate, missus. Now stand there. Stand still. Why, what are you doing? What are you... No! Ah! My hand! Yeah. Was... That's for hurting my mother, you old bastard. Next time it'll be your face. Then a go. I'm going to count to five, and then you get it. One, two... Come on, come on. Three. Four. All right, all right. Where are we going? But we'll be back. And you know what to expect. Mum, are you all right? He's punching me on the forehead. It's bleeding. Sit down. Come on, Mum. Let me look at that cut. You do look a fright, Mum. He used a ring as a knuckle duster to, to cut me deliberately. Why would he do that? Oh, that's easy. We saw that in a horror film called Darkness at Nuns Me. Oh, yes. If you cut a witch above her windpipe, you take all her supernatural powers away. They think you're a witch, Mum. Come to avenge Set Yaxley. Oh, no. We've worked it all out. That, that boot we dug up in the garden, that's Set Yaxley's. They murdered him and buried him seven years ago. They thought they'd got away with it. And then we turned up and began to poke about where only another witch would dare. And Sep's cat came back like magic and made friends with us. And then led us to where they buried Sep. It must have seemed like black magic to their tiny Aboriginal minds. And they're going to murder oh, us. Oh, Jane, for heaven's sake, this is England, not Chicago on the telly. Oh, so what are they going to do with us? They're just going to blab to the police so they'll come and dig Sep Yaxley up and charge half of them with murder? Exactly. They either have to shut oh, our but, mouths uh, or... I don't see why they killed Sep Yaxley in the first place. He, he was their cunning man. They paid him to do things for them. Show us Sep's account book, the last page. Look, here, Mum. At the bottom. Oh, where? There. To treating Miss R.B. for the marsh fever. Five pounds. To rail fare to Norwich for the inquest on Miss R.B. Four pounds. They must have blamed him for her death. Nobody came to see him after that. Nobody paid him anything. The last date is June 26th, 1981. But... but... Oh, don't tell us this is England, <laughs> Mum, or the 20th century. The last cunning man to be murdered was in 1945. He was a farm labourer in the Cotswolds. They found him pinned to the ground with a pitchfork. But how do you know Oh, we saw it in a TV series about some famous flying squad detective. He investigated that murder for years. He went back to the village dozens of times, even after he retired. 
He knew it was a ritual killing, witchcraft. There was no other motive. <sighs> but he never got anywhere. He reckoned the whole village was in the murder together, that they appointed one man to do the killing and they weren't saying anything. You can't get anywhere if a whole village is against you. Oh, Tim, you're so cold-blooded. Yeah, the point is, what happens now? I reckon they won't try anything before dark. They know what they'll get. Well, you wouldn't shoot them. I damn well would. When they come again, it'll be to try and kill us. Oh, that's silly. But how could they? Guess Daddy knows we're here. And Missy Axley and the vicar. They'd never get away with it. When they found out bodies, the, well, the police... Oh, well, that's what you think. We've worked out one perfect way. They could do it already. How? Tie us to the beds upstairs, set fire to the whole cottage. Oh, with all these oil lamps and a cat roving the house, who'd suspect anything but an accident? Well... Whole families die in accidental fires every week. You see it on the local telly. Doesn't even make the main news headlines. But the police had find the, the, find the ropes binding us, the, the, the marks on our wrists. <laughs> They'd be lucky to find anything of us at all. They wouldn't know the house was burning till they saw the light in the sky. And then they might just think it was burning stubble or something. And how would they ever get a fire engine up this path? The house would be a heap of smouldering ashes before they even got here. Oh, Tim. And the point is, we've got to save ourselves. I can hold them off till dark, because I've scared them now. They'll be looking at that hole in the old bastard town and wondering what it's like to have the same hole in your face. Oh, God. But after dark, one petrol bomb through a downstairs window... Can't we make a run for it? Oh, they'll be watching the house. Yeah. I can see six of them from up here. I bet we're surrounded. This just isn't happening. Yeah. One of us might get away around dusk. If one of us got away, they wouldn't dare harm the others. Not unless the one that got away was caught. You'll have to go across the fields, Jane. Or go along the beach. No, they might even send someone to watch the beach. Keep to the hedgerows, that's but best. Jane can't go. Well, I can't. Jane's useless with this pistol, can't hit anything. And you're no good, Mum. They'd sink at you. Besides, you've got to stay and talk to them when they come back. Negotiate, play for time. You'd be OK at that. I'm useless. Paralysed. Just letting Tim run things. He's tense, but he's not scared. My God, what kind of child have I raised? I think he's almost loving it. It's just like they say. The young make the best killers. They have no imagination. Got a little job for you, Mum. Now, listen carefully. Mm -hmm. All I want you to do is go down the garden to the loo. You must be bursting by now anyway. No. But the thing is, when you come out, forget to close the loo door. Leave it open just a foot or so, right? Mm -hmm. Can you remember that? Don't close the door afterwards. Leave it open carelessly, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, OK. Here's your anorak. Put your hood up, it's raining. Get your hair wet. That's right. Now, off you go then. Old men all around, watching. Oh, it's so humiliating. It. I can't even remember a simple thing like that. I'm useless. Useless. Well done. Well done. Uh, don't close the back door either. Oh. What have you blackened your face for? I'm going to crawl down to the loo under cover of the hedge. You start lighting the oil lamps near the kitchen window, Mum. That'll distract them. They won't notice me. I don't know what he's up to, but I'd better do as I'm told. Where are those matches? Is that right, Tim? Oh, it's gone. Shh, he's nearly there. Don't look out of the window, Mum, for God's sake. Good. He's made it. And they haven't noticed him. What's he doing? 
The loo's got a little wooden hatch at the back that leads into the next field. Well, if Tim can work the hatch open, I can get away without them seeing me. Into the hedge and away. <laughs> what are you putting on Tim's anorak for? You, you're already wearing yours. You spot the difference, Mum. Mine's green, his is red. Pull my hood up. There, now, does it hide my face properly? I don't understand any of this. You will, Mum. You will. Must go. Tim's signalling for me. He must have the hatch open. Bye, Mum. She goes in. Shuts the door. Now they're both in there. Oh, God, Tim, hurry up. I want to get this back door shut and bolted. Oh, Jane's coming back. Oh, Jane, what are you doing? Hello, Mum. I thought you'd get the back door shut and bolted. It's a good old anorak switch. Nifty, eh? Where's Jane? Through the little hatch and away. It's getting quite dark. I'm sure she'll make it. It's really dark now. She's been gone nearly an hour. No shouts, no alarm raised. Mm. She must have got clean through them. Of course, it will take time for her to find the vicarage. Yes. I can't believe any of this is happening. Look at the way he's moving. Like every American video he ever watched. Dirty Harry, lethal weapon. God knows what he's seen. What's happened to my children? Mum, hmm? they're coming. What? Down the path. About four of them. Come and hold the torch for me. <laughs> Don't switch on till they're really close. Don't switch on till I tell you. Then let them have it full in the face. Blind them with it. That torch is a quartz halogen. They won't know what's hit them. Oh, don't stand right in the middle of the open window. Mum, they might have a gun. Stand like me. Gun held vertically. His back pressed against the wall. Cagney and Lacey. Miami Vice. Right, Mum. Shine it now. <laughs> Got them. That's far enough. Stand there or I'll shoot. What do you want? Mrs. We got your daughter here. <gasps> Oh, hell, they've got her. She looks scared stiff. What have they done to her? She shouldn't be wandering around the countryside out the dark. We don't want to do her no harm. Just you open that door so she can come in. Oh, come on, missus. No. Open that door. What's that moving on the edge of the light? It's the cat. It's walking right up to them. Bold as brass. It's looking at each of them in turn. It's got them bloody paralysed. <laughs> Jane's broken loose. Back door, Mum. Back door, Cliff. Take that, you old sod. And that. Oh! Thank God you're safe. Now upstairs. Quick. They've gone. They've done for the cat. What? It's just lying there. So is a pair of spectacles and there's blood on them, oh, I think. Uh, put out all the oil lamps, Mum. We don't want to make their job any easier. Let them do their own torching. They caught me on the beach, a mile away. The beach? I got tired of crawling through hedges. You stupid nerd, you might have known I warned you. You tried crawling through 50 hedges. Oh, the cat's still not moving. Oh, it must be dead, poor cat. He knew. Knew what? He knew who the real murderer was. It looked at three faces and went for the fourth. I bet it had seen it all happen. It remembered. After seven years? Cats never forget anything. Uh, well, it's had its revenge. Nearly clawed his face to bits. I doubt he's seen much at this moment. Oh, Timothy. Uh, they'll be a bit sorry for themselves for a while now. They were flailing at the cat with their bill hooks and hitting each other. Oh. And I hit one in the cheek. That'll have knocked a few false teeth out. But they'll be back. And I bet they have the young blokes with them next time. I can't seem to hit anything. They're keeping right down behind the hedge. They have got petrol bombs. I saw one. Just try the torch again, Jane. To the right of the gate. Oh, missed. I'd better save my ammo. I've only got five slugs left. It's no use. But at least it's keeping them busy. I think they're going to have a go, Mum. They're flicking cigarette lighters. What? Yep, this is it. Look out! Here they come! They've hit the front door! It's on fire from top to bottom! 
Oh, I hit one of them, though. In the arm, I think. Oh, we've got to go out. Got him! Oh, for God's sake, Tim, we've got to get out! Tim! Hey, what's that? What? There's something coming up the path. A diesel engine. I think it's a Land Rover. Are they going to ram raid us? No, it's the Fuzz Mum! Yeah! They're all running away! Well, that won't do them any good. I recognise half of them. The woman from the village shop was there, and her husband. But who told the police? The vicar? You all right, missus? We'll get this here fire. <laughs> Maybe you're worried. Oh, yes, Mr. Go to bed. We're all right. Thanks to you. Oh, that's good. We've had one killing. I just don't want them all. They killed the cat. It's lying in the garden. No cat here, missus. What? No cat here. <laughs> Right, son. Next one. There was a bloke with long, frizzy ginger hair. Yep. Got tattoos on both arms. Mm -hmm. Drives a big blue tractor. I don't know his name, but he was definitely carrying a petrol bomb. Mm -hmm. He lives in the first council house on the left. Mm -hmm. Pass Miss Yaxley's. My oh, children. Oh. And there was another bloke. He was about five They're like six, avenging demons. Short black hair and glasses. Sitting there, and he had a drinking cokes. Sending people to prison. Hurry up with that suitcase, Tim. I don't know what you're mooning about for. I'm going to be home by lunchtime. I've got to go to the supermarket. We are going to take the cat home, aren't we? No. It wouldn't fit in at home. It's savage. It might attack somebody. It's happier here. Where they tried to kill it. After it's put all those people in prison, it won't stand a chance. It rescued Jane when they had her. You can tell it wants to come. It keeps coming down to the car with us and trying to get in. Here it comes now. Oh, you can't leave it here. Your daddy wouldn't like it. He'd get rid of He'd it. He'd better not try. If he doesn't like it, he'll have to lump it. It's one of us now. If it doesn't come, we don't come. Don't be ridiculous. And what's that stuff in the baskets under the thermos flasks? Set Yaxley's books. You can put those back in the cottage straight away. Go on, put them back. No way. We're having them. Nobody else wants them. All his secrets are there. They'll be our secrets now. Put them back this instant. No way, Mum. I've never known you like this. Come on, Jane. I'll carry the basket. You can carry the cat. So you're the car, Mum. Jane, put that cat down. We're leaving it here. Jane! Jane, did you hear what I said? I said put that cat down. In Yaxley's Cat by Robert Westall, Tim was Richard Pierce, Jane, Susan Mann, and their mother, Catherine Herbert. Nathan was Peter Tuddenham, Miss Yaxley, Patience Tomlinson, the vicar, Jonathan Wyatt, and other parts were played by Joe Kendall and Graham Howes. Yaxley's Cat was directed at Pebble Mill by Nigel Bryant. <laughs>